Hello, I'm Andrea Kunder, and I'm excited to talk to you today about the Brava RR Lyrae Spectroscopic Survey targeting old middle poor stars in the galactic bulge. Why should you listen to a talk about RR Lyrae stars? Well, because bulge RR Lyrae stars are fascinating nonconformists. Whereas modern wide field spectroscopic surveys of the bulge have shown that the bulge is rotating as a separate component with a rotation curve that is shown by this um, white um, line here. The bulge Aurora Lyrae stars do not follow such a rotation curve, and instead they are a non or slow rotating population, and they have properties consistent with the existence of an older bulge, spatially coincident with the massive barred bulge. So let me show you why these observations suggest this. The Brava spectroscopic survey targeting M giants in the galactic bulge found conclusively that the bulge was rotating in a cylindrical manner. And body simulations can explain this rotation but as the bulge having been formed from the disk. And importantly, the kinematics resulting from this simulation are in complete agreement with what was found from the Brava spectroscopic survey. Subsequent spectroscopic surveys, Argos, Gibbs, Apogee, have come to the same conclusions. Our bulge is rotating cylindrically, and the kinematic observations are consistent with the bulge being formed from disk instabilities. However, our Lyrae stars show a different story. Our Lyrae stars are more metal poor than the bulk of the stars in the galactic bulge. They peak at metallicities of about minus 1.2 as compared to the sun-like metallicities found for a typical giant or red clump star in the bulge. Our Lyrae stars started their life as low mass stars. Um, they exhausted the hydrogen in their core, moved up the giant branch, and are now in the horizontal branch, fusing helium in their core. Uh, they reside on a part of the horizontal branch that crosses the instability strip. And so these stars radially pulsate. This is great because one can identify them in photometric surveys. They have a typical sawtooth um, shape as the star gets larger and smaller and brighter and dimmer over time. And they pulsate with periods of about 12 hour hours. Our Lyrae stars are also popular population two type stars because they are standard candles. Their luminosities can be estimated in a pretty straightforward manner. Our Lyrae stars, therefore, can give us a glimpse onto what the old, more metal poor population in the bulge is like. This is a map of the known Our Lyrae stars identified from the Ogle photometric survey. Um, the highlighted stars are stars that we have followed up using the Anglo-Australian telescope. <clears throat> because these stars radially pulsate, we have two to four epochs per star so that we can trace out the radial um, velocity variations and can find a mean center of mass radial velocity with an accuracy of about 10 kilometers per second. We are so fortunate to have the Gaia space satellite. Thanks to Gaia EDR3 proper motions, we were able to match all of our Brava Aurora Lyrae stars with a star in the Gaia EDR3 catalog and therefore have proper motions for our Aurora Lyrae stars. With radial velocities, proper motions, and also distances, since remember Aurora Lyrae stars are distance indicators, we were able to carry out an orbital analysis of our Aurora Lyrae stars to understand where these stars came from and where they are going. Collaborator Angelus Paris Villegas carried out the orbital integration for us. We next separated the stars by their galactocentric distance. Those that have distances, galactocentric distances less than one kiloparsec are shown by these um, black open circles. And those that have galactocentric distances greater than one kiloparsec but less than 3.5 kiloparsecs are shown by these green X's. And it is immediately obvious that the R. Lyrae stars that are most centrally confined um, do not trace out a barred elliptical distribution, whereas the R. Lyrae stars that are more loosely bound to the galactic bulge do trace out a similar elliptical bar-like structure as seen by the VVV um, red clump stars. We also find 
that the Aurelire stars that are more centrally confined seem to have a slower rotation than the Aurelire stars that are less con centrally concentrated. Missing still is spectroscopic metallicities of the majority of our Brava RR Lyrae stars. The signal to noise was just not that great to get precision abundances. We wanted to follow up especially the centrally most concentrated stars and compare those to the stars that were not as centrally concentrated. So we took new observations using the Anglo-Australian Telescope and AA Omega targeting stars um, in the central region of the bulge. This shows our new observations of our Lyrae stars um, closer to the plane of the galaxy than we had probed previously. A really great paper by Alessandro Savino came out in 2020 that measured Fe over H abundances from the calcium triplet of the Bravo Aurora Lyrae stars shown in green. Our new observations of Aurora Lyrae stars probe a little bit closer to the plane and also have higher signal to noise ratios than those in Savano, Savano et al. 2020. Here is an example spectra from the AAT. Um, you can see the calcium triplet lines, one, two, three. To find Fe over H abundances, we use the first calcium triplet line, which is zoomed in here, and we measured the equivalent width of that first iron line. It was first shown by George Wallerstein that there is a relation between the equivalent width of the first calcium triplet line and that of the NR Lyrae stars Fe over H. Recently, a new calibration, calibrating calcium triplet equivalent width to Fe over H, was carried out by Zenik Prudel, and we use Prudel's new relation to determine Fe H metallicities of our stars. We had to discard a number of stars because the observations were taken when they were at a phase where the temperature was too hot to reliably determine uh, calcium triplet lines. And or it, uh, we also had to discard stars that didn't have the signal to noise required to get good calcium triplet abundances. Our remaining sample included 70 R Lyrae stars with signal to noise ratios 30 or greater. Importantly, we also only retained stars that had apocenter distances of less than 3.5 kiloparsecs so that we could ensure a bona fide sample of bulge Aurelare stars. We then measured the equivalent width of the Aurelare stars presented in Savino et al. 2020 so that we could have a consistent metallicities for a larger sample of bulge Aurelare stars. We split the Aurelare stars by galactic latitude to see if our Aurelare star sample showed a vertical metallicity gradient, such as what the giants and the red clump stars show. For example, Christian Johnson in 2013 showed that when you look at giants, giants closer to the plane of the galaxy are on average more metal rich, and as you move further from the plane of the galaxy, they become more metal poor. This has also been seen in the VVV survey and um, many other publications that have looked at metallicities of bulge stars. In contrast, the RR Lyrae stars in the bulge do not show such a radial metallicity distribution. In fact, we see no real difference in the mean metallicity um, depending on the galactic latitude of an RR Lyrae star. This blue plot, this blue histogram, shows the metallicities of the RR Lyrae stars between a galactic latitude of minus 5 and minus 6. This um, pink plot shows our Lyrae stars between 3.5 and 4.5 degrees in galactic latitude. And this red histogram shows the metallicity distribution of the our Lyrae stars closest to the plane of the galaxy at minus 1 to minus 2.5 galactic latitudes. All of these our Lyrae star populations have a mean metallicity of about minus 1.2, consistent with what was find, found by Savino et al. 2020. If we look just at our new sample of R. Lyrae stars, those closest to the plane of the galaxy, and also those with the higher signal-to-noise ratios, 
we find a similar trend that there is no correlation between a star's location in galactic latitude and the average metallicity. If we split the R Lyrae stars by apocenter distance, however, we do see there is a difference in FEH metallicity. This histogram shows the metallicities of the R Lyrae stars that have apocenter distances between 0 and 1.2 kilo kiloparsecs in pink. And the blue histogram shows the R Lyrae stars that have apocenter distances between 1.25 kiloparsecs and 3.5 kiloparsecs. Those R Lyrae stars that are on the most centrally confined orbits have on average higher metallicities than those that are not on as centrally tight orbits. A KS test gives a p-value of 0.045, indicating that we cannot be certain that these two populations of R Lyrae stars with different apocenter distances came from the same parent population. Here's a scatter plot that shows the apocenter distance of an R Lyrae star as a function of its metallicity. And again, you see that the more tightly bound the R Lyrae star is, the higher its metallicity. Such a correlation, such a metallicity trend is not seen in galactic latitude, but is seen when you consider how tightly bound an orbit is, an R Lyrae star's orbit is. In conclusion, we can identify bulge R Lyrae stars because we have three-dimensional velocities and positions and therefore can obtain orbits and select only those R Lyrae stars that are truly confined to the bulge. 25% of R Lyrae stars, or possibly even greater if you go closer to the plane, are actually halo interlopers and will contaminate a sample of old metal pore stars. We see within the R Lyrae stars two types of R Lyrae star populations. The R Lyrae population that is most centrally confined, most centrally located, does not trace out the barred bulge, has a rotation signature that is slower or um, very small, and also has mean metallicities that are on average higher, more metal rich, than those that are not as centrally concentrated. The R Lyrae stars not as centrally concentrated have similar characteristics to the bulge bar. They trace the bar in a similar manner than the red clump stars do. They have a little bit of slower rotation, but still show some rotation. And they have, on average, slightly lower metallicities. The central most R Lyrae stars have characteristics supporting the Milky Way having a composite bulge, retaining an older, centrally located spherical bulge component. So what does this tell us about the formation and evolution of galactic bulges? Well, within the local 11 megaparsec sphere, massive galaxies such as the Milky Way appear to have either pseudo-bulges, which we believe come from disk instabilities, or no detectable, detectable bulge. Bulges that come from merging events tend to give rise to spherical, classical-like bulges, but these are not very common in massive Milky Way-like galaxies. This is curious because Lambda CDM predicts that lots of merging events should have happened in the early history of the universe, and so there should be lots of galaxies that show classical bulges. Our results indicate that there could be a bimodal nature to bulges, that two bulge populations can coexist within a galaxy. In our Milky Way, the pseudo-bulge is the dominant um, bulge that we see when we look at the galactic bulge. However, the R. Lyrae stars indicate that there could be a classical bulge that is also um, very centrally located in the Milky Way galaxy, coexisting with the barred bulge population. It is still unclear how Gaia Enceladus fits into the formation of the inner galaxy, and this is something we're actively exploring with our Aurelare stars sample. Thank you.